Now, in BBC Four's Justice Season, a powerful film from Morgan Matthews, tracing the emotional impact of violent death on families and communities across the country. With scenes some viewers may find disturbing and some strong language. Scenes from a teenage killing. David's a chunky one. He's the one kneeling with his nappy on. Is it in, in the pool? In the pool. He gets clobbered in a minute. It's when we realised there was something wrong with David, because he wasn't interacting like the other kids. And he wouldn't necessarily talk to you. He'd squeal at you. But different squeals make different things to him. Right, you'll see his special wave now. See it? Oh, bless him. Look at him. That's when he wanted something. I'd say when he started school, when he was five, that's when I really noticed it, because it was, oh, it was a nightmare. What's At the beginning, it was bad behaviour, bad parenting. Yeah, the then they realised it was nothing to do with that, it was something to do with David, so we had to go to Westcote's house and he had to be monitored. And they were the ones who said autistic spectrum disorder, but they weren't sure which one it was. He used to come and call they're calling me oh, half right, a brain again, this, Mum. He used to call that to him, half a brain. I mean he hardly ever went out, did he? Three I think about three times he went out. And obviously the third attempt was obviously when he got was killed. How long's it been now since since David died? Eight weeks yesterday. So it's just dragging on. Dragging on? Well, yeah, because obviously they've still not released his body. First impressions I saw was it's a stabbing. I was I turned in my and there was nothing there. I just couldn't understand it. Every day is a struggle for me. But I don't sleep at night now. I don't sleep whatsoever. I can't sleep because all I can see is my boy on the floor. I just want my boy back. Cody, <laughs> have you got a second? You got some diaper, please. Yeah. <sighs> I just wish something could turn my head off. Myself down because you won't let your kids see you. Say that. Else for it. You have to go in your room, sort yourself out. Don't let the kids see you, I please. I've got to help it though. Come on, John, drink water. Please. Clive is completely switched off. He can't cope with it at all. So when he's getting bad nightmares, he's getting flashbacks of what happened down there. He, re he really needs to speak to someone, to be honest with you. Thank you. How about you? I don't really know what I need or what I want. I'm just confused, I think, with all what's going on. Well, it's a new situation. You don't know what to do, do you? I've never been here before. I don't know. So I haven't got a clue. All I know is these boys have been bailed. They've got no bail conditions set against them. So they can come and go as they please. How do you feel about that? Angry. So what what happens now? I'm waiting on the police to get back to me to see what's happening there. Obviously I'm waiting for the coroner to release his body. So it's just waiting and really waiting by the phone on my door to not so I know some more, to be honest with you. I initially got told it'd be 10 to 12 weeks before David would be released. 10 to 12 weeks went, and I got told I needed to be another autopsy. 
and I actually I had I had to go at the family liaison office, so I accused her of lying to me about how long it was going to take. She made a few phone calls and come down to my house, and she says, "We can actually give you David if you want him." So I'm like, "Fine, fine. When were you going to release him?" She goes, "That's the thing. We can release him, but we can't release his brain." And I was like, "You're having a laugh." I says, "No, my son can't complete with me. I'm not having him incomplete." So when I finally got the phone call that they were releasing David... So I can't do it myself. That was why it was so traumatic. And how long had they kept him for? Seven and a half months. Seven and a half months? Yeah. You've been waiting? Yeah. So from, yeah, f seven and a half now, today. And were you given any reason why they kept him so long? Because of all the medical tests that they needed to do. But why did that take so long? Because in total he had to have three three autopsies and post mortems. Mm -hmm. Do you think this, this day will make a difference for you as a family now? I think it's more accepting that. To be honest with you, I think it's more about accepting it's happened and he has gone because it it doesn't feel real. Maybe this is what we need, you know, to wake us up a bit, I think. Oh, my God, look at you. What's this? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Better for seeing you. It's not coping with everyone around me, though. I'm afraid you're going to have to for today. Mm. Would it be all right with that? Yeah, that'd be fine. I can't look at the car. Take a deep breath. I have to. will be fine. Sorry. Come on, then, Clive. It's the last thing he needs us to do for him. Right, this is Bill Air, David's friend. Would you look after him? Because I'm going to put him in your car with you, OK? You stay with Lynn and Bob. Nim, Bob, Kirsty, Simon, and Billy, all in the third car. What would be justice for you? The punished for it. What kind of punishment? Prison. A a anything, just to prove that they did do it. And then I can grieve for my son then. Because you don't think you have yet? I haven't even started. <laughs>